going to talk about Monday's show where I did 105 meals for $50. Now, Dining on a Dime Cookbook is where the inspiration for that came. I wrote Dining on a Dime because even 20 years ago, people kept saying, there's no way I can cut my grocery bill. Groceries are so expensive. And I was like, yes, you can. I spend $125 for my family of four. Back then I did. And so I wrote Dining on a Dime Cookbook to help people save money in your grocery bill. Person after person after person has saved money. And you know what? On YouTube, I forgot to print it out. So forgive me if my numbers are totally incorrect, but I think, I think I'm remembering it right. We had a viewer say she went from spending, have you had your heart medicine? Mm -hmm. Okay. You're sure? I'm sure. Positive? I'm positive. I don't think you're prepared for this I do before every one. show I have my heart medicine. So for three <laughs> people, she was spending $1,500 a month for groceries and $1,300 a month eating out for three people. And she said she completely slashed that. And I can't remember, but I think she said she got it down to like $400 a month, something like that. And they're not eating out anymore. It works. It really works. If you just do it. Yes. So That's Dining on a Dime Cookbook, you can get it at livingonadime.com. We are going to talk about a few of the comments though we got and address some of those. Address a really, as Michael's sitting there slapping his head, we're going to address <laughs> a problem that we have uh, noticed uh, in the comments and a problem that we have noticed all around now for those of you who are watching this later um if you watch live we are dividing our shows after we shoot them live we are taking off half the show and we're posting it the next day so for those of you watching live if you miss part of the show you can go back and watch it and we're going to do it that way just to make our shows a little shorter just for those of you who are regular viewers but we got a lot of comments about feeding five people for $50, 105 meals in a week. And one of the things that we've noticed, and this is not just from this particular show, but one of the things that we've noticed is people are making food a god. <laughs> okay, the silence in the room is deafening. And you can say, oh, I would never do, oh, I would never do that. But here's the thing. We can tell from the comments if food is your God or if food is not your God by how you react to what we say. And we notice this like really big time back last summer when I mentioned that with my assistant Heidi, who does can, when I did a video with her about how canning doesn't necessarily save you money. And the response, huh? The response was crazy. And let me tell you, a lot of these canners, they have made canning their God. You don't buy anything canned. You can all your food because it's healthier. Blah, blah, blah. Now, I have, and I said this in the video, we have absolutely nothing wrong with canning. If that is a hobby you enjoy doing it, please do it. I like soap making, but making my own homemade soap is not cheaper than buying six bars of Irish Spring at the store. And I did canning for years. I yeah. did canning for years. And if you have a huge garden with tons and tons of produce and you like canning in the middle of summer with the heat beating down on you and standing in front of a hot stove, <laughs> why you want to do that, I have no idea. <laughs> but like my assistant Heidi, she loves doing it. That's, to that's totally fine. But the response that we got from that, which I didn't see, I just heard from other sources. I mean, we had people just railing on us because we had the audacity to say that canning doesn't actually save you money. And here's the thing. We are here to help the common person 
the working mom who's tired, the stay-at-home mom who has three kids under five, make your life easier by cooking easier foods. That's not horribly expensive. Still healthy, mm -hmm. still very, very healthy. And when you have turned around and made food your God, that is wrong, period. Now, how do we know you have turned your food into a God? Go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, what we are seeing is a lot of stress, a lot of fear, which turns into anger and frustration and discouragement. We see a lot of that. We sell a cookbook, and can you believe this is what we're seeing? I mean, it, at first it didn't even make sense. At but, first we thought it was just a few crazies. But <laughs> it's a lot of people that yeah, are, are given into fear and, and, like I said, stress and frustration. You don't need that in your life. Mm -mm. And if we can any way help you to see how to not have that anymore in your life, we did want to add, address this, but we see so many people who are just, afraid. It's the yeah, fear. Yeah, it's just you can tell in their voice, in their comments, it's like, what do I do? Or I can't do this. Or just the, the stress. So that's why we're going to go ahead and bite the bullet and, and kind of talk about this today because food, it's really a lot about food. It's always questions about food. It's never questions about my clothes or something like that normally. It's mostly about food, how I deal with feeding my family, making meal plans, buying gross groceries. There's just like a hysteria in their comments and their voices. And there are people who get very angry. Yes. Because it's I an get emotional, hamburger. It's an emotional yeah, issue. Because I get hamburger for $1.99 a pound and there's no way they can get it for less than $3.99. You guys, it is not about the prices. No, we can't. It is about really using your brain, using what you have, where you live, using what you have, doing the best you can with what you have, and using it to the best of your ability and learning how to do these things. Yes, do you have a comment, dear? A number of people are asking, what do you mean by making food your God? So that's what we're going to do now. <laughs> go ahead. Do you me? want to go ahead? Oh, well, or do you want me to go you ahead? You go ahead. You can start. Okay. What do I mean by making food your God? So, if you are always thinking about your food, it has become a God. Period. When am I going to have dinner? How am I milk plants? You, How much money am I spending? If you get super upset and you practically nudge somebody in the street over there disagreeing with you. Yeah. <laughs> the so anger, here's the thing. The frustration builds up in you. When you comment back to us, me, mom, Heidi, whoever, when you comment back to us and your tone is angry, you have made food a God. An example. Well, there's no way I can get meat for three ninety nine dollars a well, pound. I mean, You're just being unreasonable. This is not normal for the average American family. Well, I live in a really expensive part of this country. There's no way I could get those prices. Or, well, what am I supposed to do? I'm gluten-free. Well, what am I supposed to do? I'm diabetic. Well, what am I supposed to do? I'm vegan. Well, what am I supposed to do? I'm vegetarian. Well, what am I supposed to do? I can't eat eggs, soy, whatever. These are real responses. When you're getting angry. Em extreme emotional response. And you are getting emotionally attacking people because they don't agree with the way you're cooking or you don't agree with the way they're cooking. Here's the thing, guys. When I do 105 meals for $50, you can take it or leave it. I'm here to help you and give you Take ideas. What you can use. But you know what? It wasn't even 10 minutes after the show. I don't know how many comments I got. Well, all those processed foods are killing you. We all know processed foods are killing you. Guys, I had seven servings of processed foods that we eat between five people in a week. I had two boxes of macaroni. Wait a minute. One, two, three, four. I'm sorry. Nine servings. I had nine servings of processed food. Two boxes of macaroni, four things of ramen noodles, and a can of tomato soup that we use in a week. Between five people, 
a serving and a half to three quarters of processed foods a week is not going to hurt anybody at all. No, you shouldn't be worrying about that. And one time, Tara, another thing that happens is Tara, one time about two years, summers ago, she was feeling, feeding, I think it was the church people or something. She had the table full of fruits, of vegetables. Sliced prob- meat, sliced cheese. Probably about, well, three-fourths of it was stuff that like a vegetarian mm-hmm. could eat, you yeah. know. More yeah. than fifty percent. It was car- It was baby carrots, carrots and cucumbers, cucumbers and carrot, or I mean, and grapes, grapes and strawberries. And-, and and what happened was, this woman, instead of looking at the table and seeing all those things on there, she says, "Well, I'm a vegetarian. There's nothing there for me to eat. There's something wrong in a person's mind or heart when you do that. It's always looking at the glass like." Half full. Mm -hmm. Is that the right way? Half empty. Half empty. Half empty. empty. Yeah. Half empty. Instead of seeing all the fruits and vegetables, she just saw that one quarter that wouldn't work for her. And it was like, I don't know if it's even the food of God or else her body is a God. You know? It's more the body than the uh, the food is is become the God. You know, this is the most important thing to me is my body. What I put into it is more important than anything else. I've always said people spend more time reading the ingredients and studying the ingredients on each one of their food items that they buy than they do their Bible that week or that Mm -hmm. day. And so when you become obsessed about something, it's not healthy, it's not good in any way, spiritually, emotionally, or even physically. I don't care how healthy you're eating. If you're obsessed about something, it will harm you. I heard a guy from the um, CDC the other day on on TV. He was talking about this virus that's starting to hit the country from China or whatever, and they they were saying, "Okay, what should we do about it?" You know, are we? You could hear the fear mounting already in the newscaster's voice, you know, and going on. And the guy, this was a famous doctor. He looked at him and said, "Okay, I'll be honest." The fear that people are going to experience and fear or mm-hmm. feel is going to be worse and hurt more people than the actual virus. And that's so true about the fear that you feel about your food all the time and that you worry about every mm-hmm. bite that goes into your mouth. Yeah. And another thing it does is where, why it's more important, it's worshiping yourself kind of a little bit in your own body. I find when they, you do things like... Um, Okay, let me put it this way. My grandma had diabetes. My aunt had diabetes. We had a lot of diabetes in our family. Most people never knew they had diabetes. Mm -hmm. They ate at people's homes. They eat at church things, at weddings. They never once asked for a special meal. They never once said, well, I can't eat that because I'm I'm a diabetic. Or get on an airplane and say, I need a special diabetic meal. Nobody back then ever said anything like that. You would go to the church potluck, you would go to somebody's home, and you wouldn't say, well, I can't eat that because I'm diabetic, or I can't eat that because I'm a vegetarian, or I can't eat that because I'm gluten-free, or whatever your special thing is. What they would do is they would sit there and maybe eat the salad, Mm -hmm. or, you know, the green beans that was there at the meal. And the meat, yeah. Yeah, and they would just quietly fill their plates with those things. They never said anything, and if somebody said, do you want this chocolate cake for dessert? They said, no, I'm going to pass. I'm kind of full or something like that, and they'd sit and drink their coffee and visit all the other people. It was not a huge production, look at me and my special needs. And I I guess it's good. I, I heard, I had a friend tell me the other day, she was catering for her daughter's wedding, and she had a woman say, I um, I forget what it was. It was like two or three different things she needed on her special diet. And she said, I won't come to your wedding or can't come to your wedding unless you can have the caterers fix a special plate for me. And the gal went and did it. Well, the, and It cost her like twice as much for that plate of food. And the gal didn't even bother to show up to the wedding after all of that trouble. If I'd been in that uh, niece's, that woman's shoes, I would have went to the wedding I would have eaten the two or three things. Or just don't eat it all. Or I was going to say, if there was good, I thought there was going to be something I couldn't eat. I'd eat before I go and I just have a cup of coffee or something like that and visit with people. 
why does everything i know there's circumstances because we're going to have immediately people All say right. you don't know i don't want the exceptions to the rule okay. and i don't want the special circumstances i'm talking about probably 80 to 90 percent of the mm -hmm. people there do this and, and the fact of the matter is it's just rude well and that just was going to be my next point rude. i went to most people no well, now the whole world will know but most people didn't really know that I don't like onions. My immediate family and a couple of close friends, but I would go, and that wasn't an allergy, but it did make me, does make me kind of sick sometimes when I eat them. But I would eat them, nobody knew about it. But I went one time to a woman's house, and she was so excited to have my husband and I over for that meal. She'd worked all day, I could tell, really hard to fix this beautiful meal. I'm sorry, the stuff she had on was, was fine, and, but, and she was so pleased and tickled to have us. And, and I appreciated that fact so much that she had done that just for us. And it meant so much. We meant that much to her that she would serve us this meal. But she had some stuff there that she served me. And it made me so sick. And I knew if I ate it, it would make me really sick. But I sat down and I ate that anyway. Because I had a choice to make. I could either allow myself to maybe be physically sick for one night and part of the next day and her be happy and excited and appreciated and feel like we care for her. Or I could choose to say, I can't eat that. That's going to make me sick and make her feel hurt, embarrassed, maybe a little offended and disappointed. Now, but I would feel really great, wouldn't I? I'd feel really good. That's the difference between having good manners, not being rude, and being kind to other people, and putting other people first. Now, I'm not talking about you out there, like my son has a nut allergy. Or a celiac. We're not talking like that. about those no, kinds of things. No, that, that he swells up and he's going to get, you know, do. that's not the type of thing. And if you guys are honest, there's probably a huge percentage of of you out there that will not collapse on the floor and have to have 911 called. You have food sensitivities is what it's called, prop, you know, type of thing. And that's what I'm talking about. That's okay if you have that and if you have to adjust your diet most of the time. But be sensitive to other people's feelings and all, don't always think about your own personal needs. You can do it tactfully. Like we said, eat before you go to some place that you think you can. You or know. nicely, if you or have nicely. a peanut allergy or if you're celiac, you can nicely say, I'm a celiac and I'm not able to eat wheat. Or I have a peanut allergy. I'm not able to eat peanuts. I don't mean to be rude, but just so you know. And most people And then are say, okay. I can eat most other stuff. And they're okay with that. And here's the thing. You've got to stop talking about your food to everybody yeah it's i mean it's like every get together every church function everything at school everybody is talking about well i'm on keto now or i'm paleo now or i'm diabetic or through the whole list again stop talking about it to everybody i'll be perfectly frank i really don't care what you eat I don't want to hear about and, it. And most other people really don't care about what you're eating. I don't and that, sit we don't there. mean that to be unkind, but it's almost embarrassing. I mean, sometimes people wonder why they aren't as popular, maybe, or, well, it's just, it's the world has changed their mind where it's all about their, yeah, yeah yes. all about me. And you need to kind of change that over a little bit because it's kinder, it's more thoughtful, it's less rude. Yep. And that type of thing. All right, dear. Do you got anything else to say? Oh, boy. Well, go. No, you know, we, go we, ahead. No, let's take the ahead. questions. Let, let them holler uh, at us. We've got some more. Karen said, <clears throat> Karen's stuff. With cookbooks, advice, and recipes, I've cut our grocery bill from 125 to 150 a week to 60 or so. Wow. Wow. So that Karen is cut good. Her, so Karen cut her grocery bill from 125 a week. To sixty dollars a week using dining on a dime. Very good. Then, Very good, Karen. And Dusty said I was spending eight hundred dollars a month plus plus for the three of us. Now I have a budget of three forty or less. 
Dusty was spending 800 and now she's spending 340 or less. Oh my goodness. Now, you see guys, you it go. does work. You can yeah. do it. They're, they're perfect examples of, that we get all the time from people. And it's funny because people, especially on last week's show when I was showing everything, we got the question, well, what do I do? I'm gluten-free and dairy-free. I'm gluten-free and dairy-free, guys. But I was able to eat 90% of the food on there. Mm -hmm. You're making this way, way harder than yeah. it needs to be. Too complicated. And you're thinking, you're way overthinking it. And what's happening, here's another thing. When you have an issue, whatever that issue is, instead of thinking, oh, well, I'll have Mexican food with corn tortillas instead of flour tortillas now. No, we obsess because we can't have the cinnamon rolls because we can't have the frosting with milk in it, because we can't eat the cereal with milk. We obsess about those things instead of thinking about, well, what else could I do for mm. a solution? I'm diabetic. I can't sit down and eat a half a gallon of ice cream now. What is something that would taste good to me that I would like to it. eat? How about a frozen banana smoothie with banana and a little bit of almond It's like milk you're feeling sorry for yourself and you're wanting everybody to get yeah. on board and help you with yeah. that problem, you know. And you need to start and, thinking about the solutions and, instead of And the thing the is, too, problem. if you are on a special diet, you're going to have to accept the fact you can't do you it. You can't eat it all. And you may have to just give up something and instead of trying to expect other people to figure out how you can have your yeah. have your cake and eat it too. Our top so. fan Shayla says, <laughs> "Preach it, mother-in-law." <laughs> uh -huh. All right, dear, go ahead and go ahead and hammer us with the with the haters. We can handle it. Ooh, Charlotte says, "I am 53. Today's my birthday. My girls are 13 and 17. I've taught them manners and grace toward others." Oh, oh happy, birthday, happy birthday, first of all. And that's, that's correct. That's what we've not, that's She's what teaching we're missing. And that's the thing, guys. Teach, teach your kids, kids manners. Not to look at, say, I remember one time I went to my mother-in-law's house, and she was a really good cook, and I loved her food all the time. But this one time, she made a casserole, and I mean, it had everything in it that I could hardly, you know, the onions and all this different stuff. And my son... Was oh, only about stuff. <laughs> my son was about ten at the same time, and it was just like stuff he could not hardly gag down. But I'd always taught the kids: I don't care how much you don't like it or whatever, you eat it when you go to somebody's house. You just be polite and nice, and you eat yeah. it. And we both sat there, and I thought I, I'm having the worst job trying to get this casserole down. And I thought my poor son, but he bravely <laughs> kept. Taking it up by the pit and swallowing it down. And we survived. We really did survive doing it, you know. But we, you teach the manners. I could be kind of a little more picky at home, but my mom always said, you eat whatever, you know, somebody gives you when you go. Some, but that's manners. That's, you know, teaching yeah. your kids right. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. All right, dear, go ahead. I'm not sure if I, uh, I, I, I'm just looking further to see if there are any other questions. Do you know what the, uh, Wanda, do you know what the difference is between lactose and dairy-free? I use almond milk and still get side effects. Uh, Wanda, what is the difference between lactose and dairy-free? So, you are not having side effects from lactose if you're eating almond milk because lactose is only in milk products. So, there is something else that is causing you to have your stomach issues. I am dairy-free because I'm lactose intolerant also and I'm casein protein intolerant but I can't do nuts very well either I love nuts but nuts make me a little sick to my stomach too so I would switch to something like a flax milk or coconut milk and try that Nancy Nancy's Windsor Essex County Tara thank you for having the courage to talk about this. <laughs> you're welcome well, Nancy. you know it's and turning, by it's the turning way, to a politically correct thing you know yeah. it's one of those politically correct th correct things that most people get tired of but nobody wants to talk about yeah and try to fix it or try yeah. to fix it by the way Nancy Ellie got her oh, birthday gift today and we got to tell she? you something funny about her birthday gift oh real my quick. goodness is Ellie really gonna tell that. Josephina says, yes, my family member talks down to me about everything that we eat. And that's that what we're talking about yeah. is when you yeah. talk down to people or you expect everyone else 
Oh yeah. To live their lives based on your life. We're the low life because we didn't eat yeah. 10, 20 yeah, vegetables. Yeah, if you're talking down to family members, you got to get a grip. And family members, you need to stand up for yourself. Yeah. That's one thing I don't put up with. And like if I have friends and that kind of thing, I'm, I don't put up with it. I'm like, I'm going to eat my ramen noodles. If you have high blood pressure, you are more than welcome to not eat the ramen noodles. But there is nothing wrong with eating ramen noodles. And now, they're not eating them every day, no. two meals a day for the rest of their life. We have it once, maybe twice a week, maybe. And yeah, so if you're talking down to people, no. So tell 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 Nancy real quick what happened Me? with or, yeah. Oh, I didn't know Philly was going to tell her. Okay, Nancy, this past week Ellie came over to um, my mom's house, and we were she she has this cute little red sports car with the, the mm -hmm. it's a convertible, and so we were telling her we that said she well, paid for herself yes, and we told her that she, we said well you need to get a cute scarf, how they used to do in the 1950 Sunglasses. movies where they tied it around and then tied it back behind their head were you going to tell Ellie or did you want me, and she would tie it back around behind her head and everything and we were practicing well we didn't have a scarf to use on her to show her how to do it. So I got an old big kitchen towel out, or uh, yeah, a kitchen towel out, and put it on her and was showing her, demonstrating how she could tie this scarf. And she was so excited on starting to wear the scarf over her head while she was driving her car, but she didn't have a scarf. And so what then comes, today, Nancy, for her birthday, <laughs> sent her the, the perfect size thing we were talking about. She just it's was, the exact thing. She was so excited. I walked in the door first thing and she's flapping this scarf yes. around. What are the odds? Yeah. What are the odds? We just couldn't believe it. <laughs> so the Holy so. Spirit told Nancy to send, yeah. send Ellie your scarf she was wanting. I said, God provides your needs even before you ask them. <laughs> so she was really excited yes, over it. So off topic, but Shauna, Shauna was asking, I don't I have jars of baby food, fruits, veggies, and meat that I found about six to nine months expired, but I hate to just throw them out. Oh, yeah, baby food that's six to nine months expired. First of all, canned foods, they put that date on there, but canned foods last forever. But what you can use the jars of baby food for is like in carrot cake, you can use the jar of baby food to make that. You can add it to soups, soups. and stews is a really good thing if it's jars of like squash that kind of thing you can do it in um like a zucchini bread recipe those are all squashes that are in there and you can add that to zucchini bread i would re take probably like a well depends on how many jars you have but for each jar i would probably take out one to two tablespoons of liquid um out of the recipe out of the recipe because it's it's more liquid um and, and then if you need more just add a little bit more liquid back but um those are some ways to do it. Bonnie says she's loving her Bible. Oh, Yay! Good, Bonnie. I'm so glad, Bonnie, <laughs> you're loving. So if you guys don't have a Bible, we need to do a Bible show. Maybe a study Bible is what. We will send you a Bible if you don't have one. So let us know. Just email us, editor at livingonadime.com, that you don't have a Bible and you would like one, and we will send you our favorite study Bible. So okay, dear. Any other questions? I. Oh, well, Susan wants to know, how have you been feeling lately? And somebody earlier, a couple people were asking about Grandma. Oh, Grandma's doing really, she's, my mom's mm -hmm. doing really good. I mean, she has moments, you know how you do. If you see, she saw my dad's Pepsi, a can of Pepsi of my dad's today, <laughs> and she broke down, you know. But she's doing exceptionally well, uh, I think, anyway, mm -hmm. doing really good. Yeah. So how thanks for asking. Feeling? Thanks for asking. Uh, Mom's not doing too good. She's kind of worn out from helping Grandma and not sleeping good. Me, I'm worn out because, well, it's my own darn tootin' fault. I'm a little stressed over the second cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> so yesterday, so I randomly pulled a couple of recipes out of the desserts to test, and they were huge failures. And I was like, what is going on? And I was like, man... Because I sent, when we were on the trip, I sent a lot of recipes to my assistants, Heidi and Janelle, to test for me while we were gone. And I'm like, I know they're good cooks. What is going, and it was major things, like a nine inch pan instead of a nine by 13 pan, and there was no salt. I'm like, this is just not right. And I, so I hadn't talked to them yet, 
but I was thinking, man, this is weird. They really missed a lot of things. Well, last night I had a meltdown. I tested five desserts and four were flops. And I mean flops. And I was like, okay, what is going on? So I texted Janelle, my assistant. I said, yeah, I said, well, I'm having a meltdown. I said, I don't know what happened, but none of these recipes are right. And a lot of times it's when we transfer from one section to another, we'll delete something or something like that. But this just seemed like an awful lot. Well, come to find out, I had not sent, I thought I was gonna have to test 300 recipes in the book. <laughs> <laughs> so I was getting ready to retest 10 recipes a day to get them done in the next month. And come to find out, I did not send them the desserts, so they haven't even been tested yet. So I am frantically testing. If you guys have been watching on Instagram, that's what I've been, that's what part of this is. And my neighbors and friends are getting all kinds of food. <laughs> lots and lots. Wow, on Facebook there are a bunch of people posting thank you for the Bibles and that they're loving them. Oh, oh good. You guys are you loving guys. the Bibles. That's great. And thank you for thanking us. That's sweet of yeah. you to do that. Yeah, thank you for saying it. <laughs> we appreciate it. You guys would be we surprised. We don't do it necessarily yeah. for the thank yous, but it means a lot to us. You'd be surprised so. how many people don't. <laughs> yeah. Okay, anything else, dear? Uh, I think that's pretty much it. All right, we are Tara and Jill, the authors of the Dining on a Dime cookbook where you can eat better, spend less. Don't forget, guys, to grab your, hold on, there, how's that? <laughs> to grab your 2020 financial planner on clearance right now. We have 100 left. They won't have the recipe testing on them. <laughs> um, and you can go to Living on a Dime on our store to grab those. And we will be back on Monday. And I think I'm going to do another grocery haul on Monday. If not, I'll do it on Wednesday. We're going to see what we do on Monday. But yeah, please like, subscribe, and share. Please visit us at livingonadime.com. Bye-bye.